Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh, and today we are doing another requested reactions video. This time we are talking all about the brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser, because a few days before I came to sit down to film this video, we got all the details about the new Land Cruiser. So we now know exactly how the trims are gonna shake out, we know what the trim walk looks like, and we now have pricing to put against all of those different trims and specs and options. And I'm gonna have to apologize right up front before we even get into this video because this is going to be a rather ranty one yet again about this new Land Cruiser. So we're going to get into all of that and I apologize again that this is probably going to be another kind of negative ranty video. Um, now a few things that you need to know before we get into all of that is first, if you haven't already, go and check out my reaction video to the new GX 550 because this new car is not all bad and there are a lot of things that I really actually do like about the new GX and Land Cruiser um, and I talk about some of those positives in that video as well as the things that I'd like to see um, Toyota and Lexus come out with in the coming years in that video. And so for sake of time in this one, I'm just going to keep it to what I'm not crazy about with this new Land Cruiser. And then second, I am a longtime Toyota loyalist and I have historically been a huge fan of the Toyota brand. Um, at this point, I have owned 10 Toyota vehicles, uh, and we are on numbers 8, 9, and 10 currently here in our household that are down in the garage and in the driveway. Um, and of, in the last five years, two of the most notable Toyota vehicles I've purchased have been a 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, which I bought brand new back in 2019, and then my uh, 2023 Lexus GX 460, which I also bought brand new uh, last summer. And the reason I bring this up is I want to be very clear that I am not some, you know, Tesla fanboy or anything like that, or a Jeep fanboy. I am a Toyota, I have been very loyal to the brand, and I have owned a lot of the vehicles like the 4Runner, like the GX, and there have been a number of other Toyota trucks in my history um, that have really paved the way for this new uh, Land Cruiser and GX. So just keep that in mind with everything I say. Now, in that GX 550 video, at the end of it, I basically ripped it apart for how expensive it is. And if you haven't seen how expensive that new GX 550 is, I highly urge you to go to the Lexus website, open up the builder, and start building out a GX 550. It is incredible how quickly that thing gets expensive because of the way that Lexus structured out the trim walk. There are a lot of features on that new GX that you can't even get until you get up to like the luxury trim or the overtrail trim. In that GX 550 video that I did, um, I actually walked you through the configuration that I would buy if I had to go out and replace my 2023 GX 460 with a brand new 2024 GX 550. And uh, my configuration ended up being about $83,000. And that wasn't even for a top trim model. And that's before any kind of accessories or other things that the dealer is gonna put on the car and also before tax title and license. So. On top of that MSRP, I'm having to add quite a bit of money, and that, that $83,000 uh, GX550 would essentially turn into a $90,000 GX550 when you factor in the true cost to purchase that vehicle, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, there is no way in hell, in my mind, that that new GX is worth $90,000 of my hard-earned cash. It's just not. And so what I've said in videos in the past has been that if I had to go out and buy one of these new uh, Land Cruiser or GX models, I would go with the Land Cruiser because I figured it would be considerably more affordable than the new GX. Now, we already knew that it was going to start at in the mid-50s, which was expensive, but I figured it would maybe top out around like $65,000 or so for the first edition or something that was fully loaded. And because I'm not the kind of person who feels the need to have like the top trim and the most exclusive model and all the bells and whistles, I figured that my ideal spec Land Cruiser would have fallen somewhere in between those two numbers. And if we split the difference right down the middle between 55 and 65, that's about $60,000. And that's a price I would have been willing to pay for this new Land Cruiser. Um, and essentially would have meant that I would pay the same amount for that new Land Cruiser as I did for my uh, 2023 GX 460. But 
Oh my god, you guys, in the spirit of Chandler Bing, could I have been more wrong about the pricing? I mean, I was way off. And I have to tell you, when the builder went live and I saw how much Toyota was uh, or is charging for this new Land Cruiser and the way that they have structured out the trim walk and the features, I wasn't just surprised, I was angry. Like, I was actually livid. And let me put a clip in here that is as good as my reaction when I first built out one of these new Land Cruisers. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess I'm stressed. It was bad enough that the damn thing starts at $55,000 for the 1958 model with that rental car spec base model interior. And that trim, by the way, turns into a $57,000 car when you add freight and destination to it. And then on top of that, the first edition, which is the top trim of the new Land Cruiser, goes up to $75,000. I mean, are you kidding me? For a turbo hybrid four cylinder, slightly biggish forerunner. Oh, this is, this should be illegal. And hear me loud and clear, I am not saying that this is a low quality car or that it won't have Toyota reliability or anything like that. But there is no way in hell that any trim of this new Land Cruiser is worth $75,000. That is over $10,000 more than what I paid for my 2023 GX 460 Premium Plus, which is as capable as this new Land Cruiser with a much better engine, not to mention it has the Lexus badge and all that comes along with it, like the much better dealer and service experience that you get at Lexus versus Toyota. I hate Toyota dealers. Like there is nothing I enjoy about going there to buy or service a vehicle. I only go there because I have to. And that's where I would have to go if I were to buy any of these new Land Cruisers because I would lose out on that Lexus dealer experience. So anyway, all that to say, I would personally obviously never buy that $75,000 first edition. Um, and now let me take you through exactly what I configured that I would buy, um, which is the mid-trim that's just called Land Cruiser. Um, that starts at $63,795 with destination. But because Toyota doesn't feel like that's enough money to charge for that damn car, we also then have to add on the premium package because I want some of the nice features and things that I have in my Lexus GX, like the upgraded sound system, moonroof, bigger screen, all the different tech features, etc. That is a whopping $4,600. And then on top of that, I happen to think that the standard wheels are kind of ugly. And so I also added on the 20 inch wheels. And all in all, my mid-trim Land Cruiser came to $69,635. So I'm already at $70,000 with this mid-trim with the one package on it. And using the same calculations I did in my GX video, which I have here on screen, which is why I'm looking at it, that means my true cost to purchase this Land Cruiser would be about $78,000 when you factor in all the different things that come on top of that uh, MSRP number. And I suppose that that's marginally better than the $91,000 that the same calculations gave me on a new GX, but still... $78,000 is just ridiculous for what this thing is. I mean, it is a mid-size body-on-frame Toyota SUV, and I'm paying almost $80,000 out of pocket for it? Absolutely not. Now, here's another thing that's been uh, getting in my craw about <laughs> this new Land Cruiser. So a lot of the publications out there are saying that this new Land Cruiser is super affordable. And I saw a headline uh, the other day that I screenshot that said it was like $20,000 cheaper than the outgoing Land Cruiser. Here's the thing that I don't know if everyone fully understands. The outgoing Land Cruiser that we last got that, that left the US in 2021 was the actual Land Cruiser. That was the Land Cruiser 200 series. This is the Land Cruiser Prado, which has always existed alongside the actual OG real Land Cruiser. And that 200 series was then replaced with the 300 series, which we don't get here, obviously. So any kind of comparison between this new Land Cruiser and the outgoing 2021 Land Cruiser is just flat out wrong. And frankly, it's because of the outgoing Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, which I actually, some of you have seen this in, in videos. I actually have a model of the outgoing Land Cruiser Prado that's always here on my desk. But it's because of these outgoing vehicles, so this Land Cruiser Prado, my Lexus GX, and the fifth gen 4Runner, that I have such a problem with this new Land Cruiser and the new Lexus GX. Because there were many things that made these older vehicles so great. But 
chief among them was the fact that they were real values in the marketplace. I mean, yes, you were getting a tremendously reliable, nearly indestructible vehicle with the choice of an amazing V6 or an even more incredible V8 engine. But above all else, what made them so special was that you could get them for fifty to sixty thousand dollars. And in fact, back in 2019, when I bought my Forerunner TRD Pro, I paid invoice plus five hundred dollars for it, which meant I only paid forty six thousand five hundred dollars for that Forerunner TRD Pro. And for that, it was a no brainer. And even though the GX has gotten more expensive over its generational run, when I bought mine last summer, I only paid $63,800 for it. And here we are, again, not six months later, and that same money won't even buy me a comparably equipped new Land Cruiser, let alone a GX. And that to me means that the value that I have always loved about the this these general vehicles is just completely gone and I don't feel like I'm getting a bargain anymore. And to be completely honest with you, we've gotten to a point where I don't even know if the prices that Toyota is charging these days is worth paying just to get Toyota quality and reliability. And I've been thinking a lot about this because, you know, a lot of people said to me after that Lexus GX reaction video, well, if you weren't going to go buy another GX, like you'd be giving up Lexus reliability. And that's true, but you know what? I'm actually okay with that. And I have been doing some digging and looking at kind of like what would I actually buy if I had to go replace my GX uh, tomorrow. And I think what I would buy is a nicely optioned uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. That carries an MSRP of $72,000, but I always see them discounted to about $65,000 here in my local market. So taking that real world price at $65,000 or so, that's a good $20,000 less than a comparably equipped GX. And I happen to think that the Jeep is nicer inside and outside. Now, like all of you have said, that Grand Cherokee probably won't be nearly as reliable as the Lexus. But here's the thing, I could spend $15,000 fixing it and repairing it and dealing with maintenance and all that other kind of thing over the course of my ownership of that Grand Cherokee and I would still be ahead of what I paid for that what I would pay for a GX. So I don't know, I am just so frustrated and disappointed with the way that Toyota and Lexus are conducting themselves in the market today and the way that they're pricing vehicles and here's the thing, here's why this is really just upsetting and frustrating to me. It really feels to me like Toyota is taking advantage of the fact that they, a lot of their buyers, a lot of loyal Toyota people will only ever buy Toyotas. A lot of people out there will never even consider anything else. And there are some people out there who wouldn't even consider a Honda, uh, much less anything else from any other country out there. And it feels to me like Toyota is just taking advantage of that fact by pricing their vehicles at these astronomical outrageous numbers, knowing that there are people out there who will just pony up and pay it because they won't ever consider anything else. But it just feels so disrespectful to the people like myself who have always bought their cars. So I don't know, frankly speaking, like the reason that we've bought the cars that we own right now, which is my GX, our RAV4 Prime and our Camry V6, we bought them because we felt like the prices were reasonable. I mean, we paid $39,000 for our fully loaded Camry XSE V6. We paid $30,000 out of pocket for our RAV4 Prime after incentives and discounts and all that kind of thing. But I honestly don't see myself buying another Toyota in the future because I cannot fathom or stomach paying this much for the cars. And I am in a very privileged position where we can afford to, we, we could on paper afford to buy these cars. But just because we have the money for it doesn't mean I want to spend that much money on a Toyota or on a Lexus these days. So Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Rant over. Um, if anyone is still watching, I, I so appreciate you watching. And Toyota, if you're listening, uh, just, just know that there is a limit to how much uh, us longtime Toyota owners will put up with. And I think we have pretty much hit that. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think about the new Land Cruiser and the GX and all the pricing uh, that Toyota has been doing recently down in the comments. Or if you want to send me a longer message, um, as you guys may know, you can always email me here at the email on screen. I love getting emails from you guys. It is seriously one of the most fun things that I, I look forward to um, whenever I get an email from all of you, from any of you, um, about all the things that we love to talk about here on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great one and take care.